find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast, the show where we get geeky talk, tech, social media, and more with local nerds that use it and live in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. I'm ready to get geeky with all you guys, and I got a couple guys in the studio. And uh, one one guy, you know, you know when this one guy's around, it's going to be a little bit of a Microsoft show. <laughs> Actually, we got a little bit of a face off. If you guys on video can see there, if you want to hold that up oh, there, there we, we go. got a little bit of uh, 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 Apple versus, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Microsoft Windows versus Mac going on right there. You got or the like, Xbox logo on the or back the Xbox yeah. still, but that's a Microsoft thing. We got of course Ron Kraus, Killer. I'm sorry, Crazy Cow. Crazy Kraus. <laughs> killer Kraus. Killer Kraus. Killer Kraus. You don't whatever. understand. Like, I, I have, like, all the jugglers. It's always killer this. And, every, yeah. you know, and, and, and I'm still in That's that mentality no a, lot of, a lot of times there. Um, but anyways, so. <laughs> um, and also John Chichilla on the couch as well, at Chilla on the Twitters. How you Back. doing, sir? Pretty good. Back for another week. Back for another week. I'm excited for this one. Um, so with that, as I fix my mic, I don't know what's going. On. There we oh, go. There I we got go. Both ears. Um, something going on. I think my board's going. I, I. So anybody knows a good board, or I don't know if I can cycle into one I've been using for production. Um, I'm looking for recommendations. Um, this this uh, Baron. I think it's a Behringer. I, that's what I usually get. So if anybody has any soundboard rec- recommendations. Around the hundred dollar mic mark, uh, I might be looking for a replacement because there's too much weird stuff going on in here, in the studio. So I apologize about that for anything that don't fix in post by accident. Um, but anyways, this is the R Awesome Cast, awesomecast.net. Email us at uh, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com if you want to let us know about any awesome things of the week. And we actually have a few, um, uh, a, a few, a few uh, 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 contributions this week. Um, we'll get to those here in a bit. You also dropped us a late. Wait, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show stuff. What I was gonna say, the there's, there's some. I was yeah, there's a phone number there. I was co opting some formats, and I didn't realize this show doesn't have a phone number, so we'll get rid of that. But you can find us on the Twitter at least at Awesome Cast. You can find Awesome Cast on Facebook, on Google Plus, and please subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. You can join us here live every Tuesday at 6 30 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sogertronmedia.com. Dot com. So let's get rolling, guys, with your awesome things of the week. Um, let's, hey, yo, Ron, you're, you're the uh, the first time in studio guest. First of all, welcome to the studio. Thank you. You, you got we, the slice on Broadway uh, brought you in, right? Oh yes, it did <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Although I'm as w- by my awesome thing of the week. I'm on a diet, so <laughs> <laughs> one slice. Well, we have some very thin ones because they 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 they, sl- they definitely kind of cut it weird today so uh, so so your awesome thing of the week for those that can't see you on, on yeah the my awesome thing of the week is the microsoft band mm-hmm. um i am a fat guy i'm a self playing <laughs> fat guy and i decided that i was becoming too much of a fat guy so i decided that you know the traditional fitness things don't really work for me i'm not a gym guy i've mm-hmm. never been um that kind of person so i thought if i could gamify the whole thing keeping s- track of steps are you jumping out of planes like we're seeing in the oh video? yeah are you going yeah kayaking for sure and everything? that's next weekend you know i'm taking runs on the bridge <laughs> yeah, right. there with the yeah. cityscape right know? yeah but like i said to gamify it so yeah every day i bought the, the better half a band actually she bought the fitbit she liked that a little better than mm-hmm. the microsoft band and which which one did she get um like the, the fitbit um flex the flex okay though it was the 129 version okay does a little bit of time and some other things on the front of it uh, so it has a little readout on it it's not like this um obviously uh this one does more notifications and things like that it does heart rate monitoring so far i seem to like it granted i've only had it since friday so i got to give it a few weeks and see if it actually makes an impact but as it goes right now it's a little competition we have going on. Hey, so how many steps did you get in today? You know that kind nice, of thing. Nice. So the, 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 that median, that median 
measurement is is the same between you regardless of what format what exactly what it's coming from and everything it's just, just the point you're getting into yeah so so of course and you're you're famously the one on the show that 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 is very very microsoft yes you're one of the few few people i know with a microsoft phone windows um, phone which but it, it, it always looks fantastic always look fantastic it just i wish people it, 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 I, it still feels like kind of a simpler option, um, but uh, to me. But anyways, but, but that's not the point. How does it kind of operate? Are you getting a little more out of it because you have a Microsoft phone? Yeah, it integrates more with Cortana, mm -hmm. which is Microsoft's version of Siri. Mm -hmm. So I can actually talk to Cortana from the band. Um, in fact, today on the elevator coming down, I have things to do tonight for work that I didn't want to forget. So I pushed a button, started talking to Cortana, and said, "Hey, Cortana." remind me at such and such a time to do this thing for work it puts it in my phone and later my phone will say hey you told me to remind you of this thing so mm -hmm. um you know so those that kind of stuff is good um it pretty much does everything cortana can do on over the phone i can do over the band it's connected via bluetooth um it tracks calories it tracks steps um, it also does all kinds of notifications, and it actually will be an alarm clock, which I'm going to find set in the next couple days instead of using my phone for an alarm clock to see if it'll actually wake me up or not. Okay. Because it's a, just a vibration. Yeah. Just to see how that goes. I'm a pretty heavy sleeper, so it'll be interesting to see how that experience. Yeah, are you, are you goes. setting a backup though? Oh, of you course. Yeah, to, the right? phone will <laughs> go off 15 minutes later. Okay, okay. But you know what I mean? I just to see if it would actually wake me up or mm -hmm. not. That that'll be interesting. Awesome. Well, and is that one thing that the how many of the the Pebble doesn't have a mic? So the, I think that's the one thing. And the gal some of the Galaxy Gears do, some of them don't. Right. But I don't know about. The Moto 360. Be interesting to see how many of them are pulling the mic over. I don't think the camera worked out so well for the for the Galaxy Gear, the original one. Um, but to pull that mic over, I think it's an interesting concept. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that that interests me was like how much information you can get on the width of the band just from because Cortana will bring up news information mm -hmm. that you might be interested in. I thought that was a really cool idea where it's all right at your wrist. I mean, you're obviously used to using the Pebble now. Mm -hmm. How much? How often do you find yourself with your phone across the room, and you you're kind of relying? At, like I said, I've only had it watch. since Friday, mm -hmm. and I'm very tethered. As you can see right here, it's within fingers' reach. I'm very tethered to my phone right now, so that might take a little yeah, time to get yeah. used to. Um, but I did notice um, earlier today, my phone was on my desk charging, and the better half texted me, and it was nice to be able to just bring my hand up, right? take a look at the text real quick, right. and just, and say, okay, I'll get back to her in a couple of minutes. I kind of had a similar thing, because I was, uh, you had the Pebble, and, and uh, for whatever, you know, my phone, I have some battery issues going on with my phone, and I just left it on the charger in the mm -hmm. bedroom. And I had the iPad in front of me, and I'm just like, okay, I'm still getting everything that I need. Oh, right. somebody's calling me, I'm not going to run for that, you know? Um, it, it's really nice to kind of detach from that, yes. you know? Not, not alone just leaving it in your pocket, mm -hmm. really detaching from it yes. has been very interesting. So, excellent, excellent. So, uh, so it's a recommended. What was it? It's a two hundred dollar device, but which is a bit more to it. You know, it's. Uh, I mean, it's it's got a pretty fantastic display on it from the looks of it. Yeah, it's actually a really nice display. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably can't see it on the camera there, mm -hmm. but. In, in, in person here, no, it does look pretty decent. And we can actually pull up. It looks about as good as it does if you're looking at the website here. Yep. Um, uh, cool animation kind of thing, you know, versus the Fitbit stuff. The Fitbit stuff has been kind of, um, the stuff that does have displays is very rudimentary. Yeah, like, it's basically yeah. a 70s uh, digital calculator um, cal kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Digital calculator slash clock yeah. kind of display. Very rudimentary. I mean, not as rudimentary as, like, say, a Pebble, but because uh, the Pebble's kind of more. Well, actually, more I would watch, say that, but the, really? their pixels seem bigger. Yes. Okay. Like it's very blocky. Like yes. I think the Pebble uses like a form of e ink, where right. it, where it can kind of do a gradient, and it, the the pixels are smaller. I feel like those are like the old LED 
the Fitbits are kind of like the old LED readout on a, on a calculator or on, mm-hmm. on on like one of those devices. The other thing is, and I think Fitbits just coming out with their new devices, the heart rate monitors, right, absent in a lot of the Fitbits, right. Sure, it's like a from the pictures, it looks like there's a sensor that's built into the bottom. Yes, there is. It's green. It's green. Yeah, it'll flash green oh, okay. when it when it's reading here. See, there you go. Okay. Oh, look at see the green. So now, you were one of the questions that a lot of people ask is the battery life. So far, um, two days. Two days. Yeah. It's, I think that's great. I can't complain about that. No, no, certainly. And from everything I've read from stuff online, uh, for example, Paul Therott, he he says that he uh, he tra- just charges his every day while he's in the shower. Okay, and that's so it. So that's that's, all you need. that's what he got in a routine sense. of just slapping it on the charger as he got into the shower, mm-hmm. and then gets back out, puts it back on. That seems to be enough. Because I I had that thought too because I'm like oh I need to charge ah, I'm going to this thing should I plug it in for a little bit and I, I wondered how much because you got to think it's small right like these mm-hmm. devices so there's not much battery for it to charge not like trying to charge my iPad and it takes forever yeah right um, so that that's awesome when the clasp the other thing I really liked about it is the clasp <clears throat> and the clasp mechanism seems nice it's like a and instead of having like the holes with the piece of metal that goes through it. It's mm-hmm. like a it's a constant like divot in yeah. it that it does it clip into that yes. or here. I can't I can't wear this. <laughs> <laughs> It'll melt my arm off. Oh, it's probably going to be huge for your wrist too. That's the what they consider the large. Okay, so it has like a it like clicks into place. Yes. And it doesn't. It will. Yeah, you can. You can click it and slide it. Slide it. it yeah. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Now is it a touch screen too? Mm-hmm. Nice. The middle button on the in the side will turn it on. And there is a little screen protector that they give you for free. <laughs> We're to that point where we need the screen protector <laughs> on. Yeah. On our thing, but that, that's my concern too. Is like, is this thing like this thing feels rugged? I feel good about it. You know. Yeah. Uh, on the pebble. Uh, and, and, and that seems like it, it, it's a pretty good build too from the looks of it. So. Yeah. And it has a nice weight to it. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. Nice. So Microsoft Band, check that out. If you have any questions, what's that Twitter again? Uh, Crazy Krause. There you go. Uh, ask him about that if you're looking into that. Um, and I know well, AJ, who's been on the show, um, I think, does his wife got one? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, um, so not the first one on the show. And he said, he said we're this close to getting, I think, a Microsoft phone. Uh, for her to, to kind of interact with it a bit. But it, it is compatible with, with everybody else, right? Like, mm-hmm. it, oh, yes. Fashion. So you just don't get the Cortana features or anything That's like Yeah, that. the Cortana is so, about the only thing you lose out on. Which it wouldn't surprise me if, if after too long, because it has the mic and it has the ability to communicate. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if, almost like any Bluetooth headset, mm-hmm. when you hold down the button kind of thing, it'll kick off whatever digital assistance on the phone. Yeah. So it oh, wouldn't yeah. surprise me if they did something like that, yeah. where if it's on iOS, you could do Siri, Siri or if right. it's on Android, you could do OK Google, things of that nature. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised by that at all. You okay over there? Yeah, yeah, I was working on a mic here. Sorry, Shilly, you're <laughs> awesome okay. thing of the week while I'm figuring this out. <laughs> um, so I have the, the one app that I actually like on Android, Yeah. Um, Allcast. Allcast recently, well, today, as in recently, uh, released an app for iOS. Now, I didn't get to find out, did it take this long because of some Apple not allowing it in the App Store type deal? But this app will actually let you stream video, music, photos, um, whether it's on the device or on a Dropbox or on, I think, I think they support Google Drive. Um, to practically any stream, other device that will accept a stream. Um, right off the bat, they list Apple TV, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Roku, Amazon Fire, various TVs, pretty much anything that supports DNLA, including Chromecast. So you can take anything on your iOS. And something that one of the reasons this interests me is if you want something, if you want to be able to give someone 
something that they can stream with that will work no matter where they go. So if you if you go to someone's house and maybe they just have a smart TV or you go to someone else's house and they have Chromecast um, or someone else's and they have Apple TV, this seems to, this seems to be one of the only apps that lets you stream to pretty much everything and is actually cross-platform. So like I said, they have, they have an Android app um, that they've shown off in the past. And I think the Android app can even cast to a Chrome browser or the Chromebook. But um, I just feel like this is one of those apps you can quickly hand over to someone and let them use it no matter where they go as long as there's a source or destination to stream to. Um, it does. You can actually link the app to Google Plus, Instagram, Dropbox, and it says other media servers as well. Um, I, I kind of like their model of what they did with the app is free, but what you do is it, you get a limited amount of time um, to stream, and there's some ads, um, and for five bucks, you can actually, via in-app purchase, you can remove the ads and increase the video length. Nice. So I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this one. I think I'm going to, this is going to be my go-to streaming app. Unfortunately, on iOS, it can't mirror the display. It's only going to be able to, to stream content from the device, but not mirror. That's something I'm actually interested in as well. Um, but mirroring seems to still be pretty proprietary depending on the OS and the destination device. Nice. So it's all cast, and where do people find that? Um, in the iOS, Apple, iTunes, App Store. Nice. So um, my awesome thing of the week is something uh, 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 spotted from CES. There we go. There's my, there's my volume. All right. All right. I think the board is going. Um, there was an announcement from Intel on this uh, compute stick. That they're putting out. Think like a your Chromecast and Roku stick kind of dongles for your computers, but it's an entire computer um, in a dongle. Um, and uh, it, 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 it's uh, one hundred fifty dollars for a Windows version, eighty nine dollars for a Linux. Um, pretty. Uh, it's not a high end one. It's only got like two gigabytes of RAM. Um, according to this, it's got, uh, let's see if we can find the specs real quick. 32 gig of storage. 32 gigs of storage, so I guess it's got flash on it. Um, latest version actually only comes with a gigabyte of RAM and 8 gigabytes of storage. Wow. <laughs> uh, you know, you know the graphics are going to be whatever building kind of Intel stuff going on there. But still, just to have that much and, and enough, you know, a little bit of computing power uh, plugged right into your, your TV like that. Um, and I think it's an atom processor that they're using in this thing. Um, I, I, I got to thinking about like what would you use this for? And um, of course, I, I think about like you know, you know, definitely just coming from Twit, you know, how they have the TVs with the Skype machines on them. Mm -hmm. What if you just, like that's how you do a Skype machine? You just plug that in the back of a TV. You network it over Desktop Presenter for like, which is exactly how we do here in the studio. Like I could see that being like an easy way to. You know, you buy the TV, you buy the stick, you have this portable computer-ish. Depends on how big that TV is, right? Um, that, that, that's tremendous. Or, or uh, there were thin, thin client, um, thin client uh, kind of kind of options too. Uh, you know, uh, like you could put that stuff on your desktop on a server, and this is how you access it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's an awesome idea, um, and, and for for fairly cheap, or even just that eighty nine dollar one, just to throw Linux on the machine. Here's what you do. You buy 20 of them. You go into Best Buy. You throw them in the backs of all the TVs. <laughs> and, and you, you Skype take it all and you over. You take yes. it all over. Yes. Yeah. You, you remote desktop into them, Skype to them, whatever, and just fire them up. <laughs> I mean, just, the, I'm pretty impressed because while it is an Atom processor, it is, it is quad core. So they're saying this is like the old... Um, uh, Pentium M kind of processors that mm -hmm. that we would have seen probably two years ago. That's so that bad. so so they definitely have some processing power behind them. Bluetooth four and eight hundred two eleven N. So you're you're gonna get some. I mean, I wouldn't I I wouldn't try editing video or, no, or yeah, anything no, no, crazy. But, but 
I've actually fired up Photoshop on an Atom based processor and it's the dual core and it I mean it runs. I wouldn't I wouldn't open up more than a couple files, but it it definitely runs and it runs well. Um, the other thing to to keep in mind too is, is as it as it has the 32 gigs of, of kind of its SSD, it's going to be fast disk access, so you're not going to be waiting for for data and a be nice. mechanical drive. And then I think it also were, that also should make up for the lack of processing power too, right? Right. Yeah. It should help. And yeah. then and then I think they were saying. Yeah, there's a micro SD port on the side. Yep. So you could just throw more space into it. Yeah. So you think it, well, you're going to have to USB your your probably your keyboard or unless it's, oh, what does it have Bluetooth? Like, oh, yeah. you just Bluetooth it in. Yeah, yeah. it's Bluetooth. What do you need that for? Yeah. Yeah. And like you were saying, the whole thin client idea. You know, if all you're getting back is screen scrapes from your workstation in the cloud somewhere mm -hmm. this is a perfect solution for something like that and yeah like you said yes you're not going to edit video with it but if so, if it's someone whose you know machine is sitting 300 miles away and they just need this machine to vpn into some corporation or mm -hmm. whatever it would be a great solution for <laughs> also, that also kind of adapt anywhere you're at oh you got a tv <laughs> yeah computer. right yep. now i have a computer you, you know. just have this and a, and a bluetooth mouse and keyboard in your bag and well, you're ready to computerize yeah. that that tv in your in your hotel room well you and know? let's mm -hmm. just think about it too most monitors nowadays have an hdmi port on them anyway mm -hmm. you know I, i'm sure there's probably some kind of power component that's needed also oh yeah this has a uh, uh the micro uh usb power i mean so does the fire stick yeah so does so does uh, uh, the Chromecast. So this is nothing new. Right. You know? I have a bunch of dongles. And I also have a bunch of little cords coming off my TV, yeah. too, at this point. Um, yeah. So, But still, better than stacking those boxes of TV yeah, boxes yeah. underneath your, your, your TV, right? Well, and I look at it as this is going to be, to me, and, and I'm going to go pro Microsoft and anti-Apple on this one. Um, this is going to make the Apple TV a hard sell. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I have a $99 Apple TV. TV. <laughs> or I yeah. have a $149 full-fledged computer. computer. Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, iTunes will run on this. Right. Yeah, yeah. You can get all your content. You get all your video. Hey, hey, all your hey, video. Stuff that doesn't require an app. You yeah. Know? Right. I mean, I just picked, what I just do? I just picked up a Fire TV stick so I could get Amazon and WWE Network on my TV without booting up my Xbox. Like, I, I bought another device to do that. Or I could have plugged in a computer and gotten all and this stuff. And got it all. Right? And gotten Hulu without having to pay for it and everything. Well, you got the whole internet. Right, right. All that, all that oddball stuff, you know. Well, I feel like this is one of those devices, too, where... So we have one, two, three, four... And we'll be bringing... A, we have, we'll be going on five TVs in the house, maybe six. <laughs> Jeez, there's like three of you. <laughs> yeah. And one's a kid. <laughs> no, like, nine one's months an infant. Old. Yeah. <laughs> But, Are they even watching TV at that point? No, not no. really. He'll 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 do like uh, Sesame Street or something like that. Okay. But this is one of those things where I could this can this is easily moved room to room. Right. I mean, oh, especially yeah. as more TVs right. have kind of that right. that side mount HDMI port. Yeah. Where you like have the old AVs. Yeah. So I mean, this is one of those things where I I could see myself buying this and. Maybe not. Maybe buying one at first, and moving it around, yeah. and then if I find myself using it in multiple rooms, moving to the okay, I'll I'll uh, buy another one for a different room or something like that. But I look at like a lot of the apps I have, like even for doing for mirroring my iPad. There's a, there's a lot of apps that do that. Mm -hmm. um, I can use that on that device with Windows, and it'll let me mirror my device. So everything that I would have spent a hundred bucks on an Apple TV, I can do. Plus, I can have a Chrome browser, Firefox, whatever browser I want, and whatever apps. I mean, could you imagine if you had this in your house and you were a Office 365 user? So now you have Word, mm. PowerPoint, Excel. Yeah. Everywhere you go, you have unlimited music from their music streaming. You have any of your Apple content in the iTunes store. You can fire up Hulu. 
Mm-hmm. You can fire up pretty much anything Netflix, you want. Netflix. Netflix. And, like, I have a, a, a small Logitech keyboard that's wireless that has a built-in trackpad on the keyboard, so it only uses one USB port. So that would go perfect in this USB slot. Because I don't know, other than a thumb drive, but I would probably just use the, the micro SD mm-hmm. expansion. I, I don't know. This is, to me, this is a definite buy. Where do I sign up? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Certainly. Huh. Well, March. And we, uh, our app of the week uh, about using your iPad as an extra monitor. So, And this is something that interests me because we, we've talked about it before. Um, we're, we're finally getting i uh, or i oh, we're just finally was... getting wi-fi where i work yeah um after all these honest, years yeah, after all these years and it's it is slow and it's limited <laughs> too um so i can't get to to a lot of places i would want to get to right um and what you can do with it like broadcasting to another device is limited um the duet application it's duetdisplay.com allows you to fire up an app on your Mac OS device, whether it's a MacBook or MacBook Air or whatever, and via wire, via all the way back to the 30-pin connector, nice. use that dev- use your iPad as a monitor. Nice. Which, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what your normal use case is for when you're out and about and doing recording and stuff like that, but if... Think about the screen resolution on the iPad. So you're getting retina. You're you're getting. I'm gonna say you're gonna <laughs> get higher display quality out of the iPad you know, than you are the MacBook you Air. Know, back in the day, um, I you know when we we had a big monitor, and then we uh, Final Cut actually output the video through the FireWire deck to mm-hmm. a big TV. So I'm thinking it would be kind of cool to be editing and have the iPad sitting next to it, and that's your display. You have a full-screen mm-hmm. retina display showing what you're editing. Because mm-hmm. the big thing is there's a lot you don't catch um, with the, when you're seeing it in a smaller window, even though I got a retina display on this MacBook and it is like native resolution. But still, I need to see it bigger to see things I wouldn't catch. Um, that would be a really nice option. That'd be yeah. a really nice option. Um, actually, uh, I saw this uh, the, the couple weeks ago when I was uh, um, uh, in studio for Mac Break. Uh, they were showing that. I think Alex Lindsay was showing this off for one of those guys. Yeah, and you can use um, it on an it's, iPhone too. It's it's yeah, it's pretty <laughs> impressive. So wait, can you can, on you, do an more, iPhone? can you do more than one at a time? That I do not know. Wouldn't that be amazing if you could just like I got two USB ports on this MacBook. <laughs> <laughs> On the go, multi-screen. I think what you need is you need you need panel. You use your two USB ports with two eight-port USB hubs, and we get you sixteen iPads. Yes, and just like (laughs) build, like I'll build a frame. I can just kind of fit over my 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 MacBook of just like iPads, you know. And then you you have you have the Skype client running with with each or or Hangout with each each person person in in it. Uh, the thing that, that was a pretty darn impressive too is so anything with Mavericks are better on the Mac side, okay. and then anything with iOS seven and above. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get the iPad, the sitting, original. I'm iPad, sitting on but... two iPad ones. I'm looking for some reasons for. Although one is still a great teleprompter, I think it's just my dedicated teleprompter at this point yeah. over there. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean. I can't imagine what it would look like on like an old 4S <laughs> with with a, with a small screen. Wow. But I mean, even even some apps like a Tweet Deck or something. I don't know. Running even on a, the, no, running on a even, six plus. Even to throw your palette over on that little screen in, mm-hmm. in Photoshop would be beneficial in the long run. So yeah, why not? So can you interact with it also, or is it literally just a monitor? I think it's just a monitor if I recall. Okay. No, it's a port interact with OS X like never before. The most advanced display for your Mac, and it shows the touch. Yeah, touch. Oh. Interact with the yeah. What? So now you can do like. <laughs> so if you had <laughs> your Wirecast, over there. Damn it, Wirecast! I need this for the PC though, because Wirecast is on a Windows machine. Right. Um, because I'm not made of money. Uh, so, so that so that is the two downsides to this app. Um, it is obviously Mac OS only. 
And the price to me, and don't get me wrong, I think the the, the price of the app is 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 appropriately specced or whatever you would say. It's it's a it's a fifteen dollar app. Although although but, I got to say, while this doesn't solve my in studio issue, I'm looking to try to turn my MacBook into a portable, portable studio, studio with Wirecast. Just solve that problem. Yeah. Because I'm replacing a high. I don't know if you've ever seen my hardware mixer. Um, it's in that 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 silver is, suitcase over there. Is by it the, the door. one? Is it? Did, did you have it up at? Chachi Slice? Plays. That's why I take it. Chachi Plays okay, all the time. Okay. Um, like I'm always behind that giant panel, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And two monitors and everything. So I need buttons to do the switching because you know I mean I'm doing three four hours of switching back and forth all night, right? I got a lever and everything, so I need something like I can't just do the clicks like I do here back and forth. Like I'm using a mouse and going from shot to shot when we do this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I've explored like apparently I can number them and and I can use the number keys to do a similar kind of thing and they're not numbered right so I just pulled up a shot that it wasn't even <laughs> like one that we're using tonight um, but I need something physical you know I don't I need to not get tired and accidentally hit something else on the keyboard and, and having an iPad you know have that touch thing and even just like the interface with Wirecast is great I just make it larger put that display over on an iPad I think I can break out these windows a little bit too so I can put just those shots I need on an iPad, um, that that'd be tremendous. God, I'm thinking here, this is worth the fifteen bucks right right there. See, and that's that's the I think that's the big thing is that a lot of people look at an app and they say, "Oh, fifteen bucks, it's really expensive." I mean, we we spent thirty for Log Me In. I just and spent, I used I used that. I just spent one hundred and thirty bucks for Disc Warrior, so this is nothing <laughs> to me right now. So, isn't there? Oh, I did what? I did see something about Disc Warrior today. I can't remember what I, website I saw it on. I'm my, my podcast this morning was about my Disc Warrior experience okay. and, and some backup issues I've been having lately. So, circuitron.com if you want to check that out. Um, but yeah, back your stuff up, guys. Um, a lot of tweets about it, too. So, um, Oh, and Akko Almack, he, he talked about that. I don't know if you listened to that one. He, he talked about using Disc Warrior versus something else. So. Okay. Um, but no, no, it's really good. Duetdisplay.com. Check it out. 15 bucks. And uh, a really cool, cool thing if you're on Mac. Sorry, sorry, Kraus. Yep. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, all right. On that note, hey, well, give us, we've got some other stuff. Uh, some. Oh, wait, wait. Before we get to that, uh, from the chat room, we had an awesome thing of the week from Alex Cars. Uh, he says, "Oh, and wait, wait, wait. Did I copy the wrong thing? Oh, his official awesome thing of the week is Podcast Addict, his new podcasting app of choice. So go check that out too. What, what OS is that on? Does, did it say? Uh, I think he's an Android guy. Okay. Yeah, so, I think it's an Android thing yeah. too. Um, so with that, uh, let's give a shout out to our friend Slice on Broadway. Let's say Kraus got in here. He got to check out some of it. Sorry about your diet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they've been providing us pizza for, for I guess we're going to be going on a year here in a few months. Uh, feeding you guys coming in studio, braiding the weather, braiding the cold out there, uh, and, and, and getting more people to help us do some high quality podcasts. Um, and of course, we like them. They got a great philosophy over there. Some, uh, you know, it says right there on their site, make the best. Best darn pizza sandwiches and salads money can buy. Make everything they can from scratch. Um, go out of their way for, to, to use the best stuff out there. Uh, they have an abnormal obsession with pizza, and I can really, really relate to that. Check out two locations there on Broadway Avenue and Beachview here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, as well as uh, 108 East Main Street down in Carnegie, PA. Please follow them at PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and tell them you heard about them on the awesome cast you can find out more about them at sliceonbroadway.com thank you thanks to them for supporting the show with some great pizza really cool people and we're, we're hoping to do some more uh fun stuff with them uh here in 2015 so uh so so we'll, we'll see what's going on maybe we'll we'll, we'll let's see we, do we have any milestones this year we just did 200 for awesome cast last year so we do a 250 party maybe um but <laughs> sure why not <laughs> Yeah, hey, actually, I got to figure out how many years it's been. It's got to be good. at least four years, right? I don't know. I'll do the math sometime. Well, actually, no, that'll be five years. Oh, we got to do something. Five-year anniversary. Five-year anniversary. <laughs> I'm sitting here playing the 10-year anniversary for, for Mayhem Show next wow. January. Uh, that's a lot so of years. That's a lot of years. I, I just listened to like uh, something from, uh, uh, we're, up to, we're up to like 452 on, on Mayhem Show. 
Uh, I just listened to something from like 189 last time we had one of our interviews tonight on the show. Oh man, we do were you not... have do you have every episode? Yeah, still yeah. archived. It's up there somewhere. Um, the Mayhem show, like the first 40 Mayhem shows, I created another feed and put them back up because we had we had them on a different server. I was gonna say you should you should find a service and just stream back to back every episode. I could just I could cue them up. Hey, remember Shoutcast? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, it's it's wow. like those people it's like those people that when they go to see like a, a certain marvel movie they're like oh let's go back to the beginning yeah. and watch everything in order from st- starting with iron man one and then people we're gonna, we're gonna to, jump to like thor and captain america and mm-hmm. iron man two people and, used to go back and listen to like i'm gonna listen to all your episodes i'm like you don't need to do that at all <laughs> um but people said somebody actually I, somebody just tweeted me today and said they were listening to episode one Wow. <laughs> from the classic stream i'm like oh people are still using that i don't, I don't get it you know i and, and i was such a bad interviewer in 2009 oh man i don't know how much better now but but uh it, it was it was rough to go back and listen to that but anyways we do have some contributions apparently you're doing something right because people keep writing us stuff and showing up in the chat room and everything uh thanks guys alex cars has been in there all night, Doug Durda, who who oh, he he had a tweet earlier. Let's see if I could bring that up. That was a good one. Um, but anyways, uh, we got one from Nero. I think we had him on the show uh, a long, long, long time ago. I can't remember anymore. I thought the guy we're interviewing tonight on Indie Mayhem show we have not had on the show yet, except for a, a brief appearance. I interviewed him twice before. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> it's just been so long, apparently. Because I found the one in 2009, and then we were referenced the last time we actually had an interview with him. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, Matt Matt Weller over on the uh, Google Plus shared with us. I uh, forgot if I mentioned this to you already, but you guys mentioned Fit Trackers again this week, and we did again this week. There you go. Yes. Uh, so I thought of it again. It looks like a legit interesting alternative for people that are fit tracking curious. Uh, This is from the entrepreneur uh, uh, David mm, Pivotal Living, Donovix startup. Uh, It's taken on uh, market leaders, Fitbit, Java, blah, blah, blah. It's about $12 for the device, I think I saw. And uh, it'll cost about a dollar a month to stay with the service, which is kind of interesting. My link disappeared unfortunately. So, oh, oh, no, a lot of things disappear. What's going on here? Yeah, there, are you th- saying a lot of things on Google disappeared? On the Google, on, on the... Reload the doc because oh. Google had an issue. Okay. I'm, I'm blaming Google. Oh, uh, okay. That's that thing that happened in this other window and it just caught up over here. I see. Oh, there's more to his message then. And I'll get a picture up here so you can see what this the, thing the looks fit, like. The, the band actually looks remarkably like the Microsoft band. <laughs> Was it? Oh, say, okay, so uh, yeah, so he says it's curious oh, yeah. people, people curious, uh, but don't want to spend a hundred dollars on a band again. I think I, I forgot if it was his message or what, but it, but I think it says twelve dollars for this thing, right? Did I miss that before? There yeah, I go. think you're right. Um, yeah, uh, how about one that costs twelve dollars? And uh, here's an image of it. Yeah, I mean, it looks like any other band for the most part. Um, they put it on a nice mountain range. Look at that. Oh, look at that. It's sexy. Um, but really kind of bringing them in with a different model with this dollar a month uh, uh, to use the app and the service uh, kind of situation. Uh, it's the right time to do it. $100 is a lot to, to to put on your wrist to just sit there, you know, for, mm-hmm. for a lot of people. You know, I mm-hmm. think not everybody has $100 to spend on something like that. But something like this, you know, $12 for that plus, uh, you know, the dollar a month, that's, that seems like a little more digestible. Which Definitely. is really funny since we're talking about fitness. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't. Somebody just dropped two hundred dollars on one. What do you think about a service like this? Uh, um, a service for me, services make me nervous. I the, I spend enough money every month paying bills. Having another one dollar a month, five dollars a month, six dollars a month. I I kind of shy away from that. I like buying something and then using it, and uh, you know that's it. And. This is it. Only it looks like it only interfaces with their app. Oh, right. well, that's interesting. So too. you're not going to be a part of HealthKit or anything else. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing I do have to say is that interoperability is very nice. The Fitbit, um, the Microsoft Band, 
Um, I'm a big believer of um, my fitness pal. My fitness pal, and they they both integrate into that app, so they take the information that the band is providing mm -hmm. and dump it into my fitness pal, which is very nice. Well, because that's what leads you kind of, think about it this way. Kind of that's what gives you that gamification and, and competing with, right. with other people. Exactly. Um, so if if you could get a bunch of people to buy this, mm -hmm. there there I will say this though, their app does look really well done yes it does mm -hmm. as long as you're on ios ios or yeah. google of course no windows phone app people imagine that <laughs> <laughs> hey we got another one here <clears throat> whoa excuse me um we got another one here from uh alex cars uh he actually reviewed the photoshop streaming we talked about if you're uh, uh, i think an educational uh, uh, subscriber to the uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, you'll 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 get the uh, a beta of the streaming version. It's available on Google Chrome, uh, so so that's one more thing you can do with those things. Um, he writes, and now some time ago was Adobe's partnership with Google in the form of a beta program, the ability to stream Photoshop on Google Chrome, which is especially helpful for those using Chromebooks. The catch is that you have an edu have to be an educational subscriber, Creative Cloud, as we mentioned, um, and he actually has an image here, which I unfortunately let me see if I can pull this up a little bigger. He says uh, this is a quick graphic. Uh, it's, it's being weird. Google Docs is being a little bit weird on me, uh, but I'll pull that up here. So this is a quick image that he he made. You can kind of see that there. So it may not look good on the monitors. Um, but uh, he says the above is a quick image he made in Photoshop, and, and let me address. Uh, what works and doesn't quite work for him in uh, using this program so far. The pros, the mainline graphic is uh, imported from one of the iPad apps he, he wrote about before here. Uh, you know, they have, Adobe has a lot of kind of integrative apps for, for iPad. Um, uh, meaning now I have something I can import graphics and such into from those apps. Same goes for brushes and anything else that works with Photoshop. Uh, pro also, the program it very much runs like normal desktop application, and you can do just about anything on here you can normally do. The cons, just about anything, and that's what he's into. Fonts, while there's a wide variety of fonts available to default, adding fonts via TypeKit presents a bit of a challenge. Desktop Sync is not available for Chrome OS, so until I find the right way to do this, it becomes a moot point. Yeah, if you're you're, yeah, if you can't get fonts in there, if, a lot of them. A lot of designers, they, they have a nice mm -hmm. collection of fonts. Mm -hmm. and if you can't get into that yet. Um, I, I, I would love to see, let's see, Chrome OS. Yeah, there's no, uh, are you talking about, you're in the chat room too. Is there is there a desktop sync? Like if I put a font in with Creative Cloud on, on my one computer, is it, I, I haven't really delved too deep into it. I'm not, I'm not a heavy, heavy Photoshop user. Unfortunately, I pay for it just so I can do like some of the show graphics and get around, do some flyers here and there. Um, so, but he said that's the biggest that's the biggest issue. Otherwise, it mostly works. Uh, he says overall, it's a solid start to something that uh, makes a big impact for anybody who uses Creative Cloud uh, for different media. Personally, he's hoping Illustrator gets a streaming version soon. I think everything will at that well, point. And, and I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. Oh yeah, I think we're gonna see, and not just from Adobe. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're gonna see all these companies do kind of a streaming app world where right because think about it think about it this way too if you can get your users to use streaming apps you've just cracked the code of software piracy <laughs> oh yeah for sure <laughs> yeah there's this no has to work on our yeah. servers yeah you can't i mean now the bad part is if you're on a plane you're not working for the most part, on any no, graphics. No, but or, let's be honest. Yeah, I don't know. Not paying eight bucks for the Wi-Fi and just letting myself be unattached for this four-hour flight was kind of nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, so maybe that can add a little bit of computer mindfulness for people that that have to do that from time to time. Um, but no, this is this is tremendous, and and you know, is that service side thing. So now I don't have to spend all this money on this. Like, would they put like Premiere on something like this? So I don't. So as long as you could stream the playback quality, right? Why the not? Biggest yeah. issue would be uh, much to the uh, the nebulous uh, that we mm -hmm. talked about before. Uh, the the uh, kind of cloud audio editing software that they they were working with uh, down in Alpha Lab. Um, getting those files up there, I think, is the biggest issue. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think they had an interesting background process that happened. So you record it, and then it goes up to the cloud kind of as you work. And they're bringing that down to work with, too. But it's, I, it's not doing, I think, streaming like we're talking about where it's a visually streaming kind of situation. But still, like, even if, and this isn't there yet, but even if you could capture on a Chromebook, that footage needs to go up. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I actually I don't think that's even going to be part of the equation. I think it's just a secondary editing machine. Right. You have to well, capture somewhere else regardless. And and I look at it as we always talk about this right and and your MacBook and why you chose the MacBook and the processing power behind it. Mm-hmm. You now have massive amounts of processing power to render that to cut down. I mean you can have a Chromebook with I don't I oh, don't I don't wait a lot. I, yeah. I, I like at this point I don't wait a lot. Even though these long hour long podcasts when they render our video, I'm not late waiting for a long time at all. But that puts that ability in anyone's hand. Mm-hmm. You buy a hundred and fifty dollar Chromebook, you now have that back end that you didn't have to pay for. Oh, so many hours I've wasted looking at <laughs> progress bars, hoping it didn't fail so I could get it out, and miss dinners with my wife because of those things. Think of the past. <laughs> until the until the internet goes down then you just then you wait you that your progress bar is waiting for it to come work, back up <laughs> you 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 work on you work on uh you work on your meditation at that point because <laughs> that's all you're gonna do. Uh, yeah. pretend you're on a plane yeah, exactly. <laughs> but anyways thanks thank you for those and that tweet thank you and apparently he's a he's a, a doug, doug dirt is actually um, um um not public on twitter so that's why i couldn't find it um but i love this apparently how, how does his wife get him to watch the kids and do bedtime while she goes out Honey, it's Taco Tuesday, and you can watch Awesome Cast on Chromecast. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there you go. Um, which made me think we need to get a Taco Tuesday sponsor. <laughs> or we can talk slice into doing a taco pizza. There you go. Ooh. That's there you go. Idea. It's Taco Tuesday. Well, I'll be hearing from a slice. Um, anyways, uh, he does say Desktop Sync has certain requirements. Can't even access it on his Mac because he still has Snow Leopard. It's free to upgrade. Do you just have an older Mac, maybe? It pro- probably, actually. Um, he says that he was on a flight once. <laughs> Side note, he was on a flight once, took a nap, don't do electronics on a plane. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Taco Pizza, they're loving in the chat. All right, we got a lot of stuff. Uh, I Okay, this was almost my awesome thing of the week. I have to bring this up. Pet Cube. Have you guys looked at this thing? I have not. Okay, it's this cube. You put in your house, and you know I've been you know, playing with that DIY kind of. Uh, I've been, I put a camera down here. I put three cameras. I, I didn't talk about this. I put three cameras with that uh, uh, Sighthound software mm-hmm. I talked about before. I put one right here, just pointing that way towards the green screen, right? One in one in the office, and then the one uh, uh, shooting out my front uh, door, uh, front window, looking at the you know the, the, the front of the house and the door and everything. And uh, I, I loved because I could stalk how many times the cat comes down here walks through and it kind of had a little bit of fascination with that this kind of adds on top of it pet cube um it's 199 dollars and uh it's kind of a, a cool little drop cami thing that you're gonna uh set and keep an eye on your on your pet you can pull up uh iphone uh, let's see what what the app's on actually um i think it's uh, it's iphone and android actually not windows phone. sorry Thank sorry you. <laughs> you're you're used to this by now right <laughs> yep um but you pull it up and you can uh talk to your pet through the box and you can actually use your finger on the touchpad and there's a laser pointer that will move to your finger from the device this has my attention because i really want to mess with my cat um (laughs) as long as they're in front of it and not taking a nap on the couch that's the other thing true when you were when you remote in i think this is the thing that you put in like the the common area for the pets right Mm -hmm. so but i mean that that's a that is useful technology entertaining technology um oh uh a youtube co-founder and a pet advocate are behind this by the way uh so um no it was kind of like the fun not here you go there the dog is not interested by the way in this picture are dogs big on laser pointers i don't know I, i'm not entirely sure but my cat chases its own tail mm-hmm. i don't know what he's going to do when he catches it um but there, there's that um but you can check it out petcube.com um i, I just love that when they're showing that off at ces so 
Um, other than that, uh, Chilla, dude. One of my favorite. You had anything in here? Or? Um, no, because you took the one I was going to add. Oh, wait, wait, which, which one? Which Sling one was TV. Yes. Sling TV. Did we we didn't talk about this last week. I do not think. And there's we been a lot did. of. It may have came out like day of or day yeah. after or something like that. Uh, uh, why are you excited about Sling TV, sir? So Sling TV is well, Sling Box. Is is probably the what started all of this for Di- it's for Dish right yes yeah. Um, yeah. Dish owns for it. Dish, um, so they bought they bought Slingbox and now they have a TV and one of the big deals is this Sling TV is you can get a box version of it like you're used to for like a cable box type device um, it also comes in kind of an app format but it's a streaming TV service. And one of the breakthroughs that they did was they partnered, and it's the first service you can get ESPN on. So ESPN, ESPN2, TNT, TBS, HGTV, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, All of this for a mere $20 a month. To start. To start. So you can add on, Mm -hmm. but the base service, just like your basic cable, is is $20 a month. Um, And... To me, this is the next step in let's just I think Netflix said it. Let's TV should just be another app on the device. Mm -hmm. Um, So what I'm interested too in is and I did not get to see and I don't think it's in here. Obviously, you can get it via the box. Obviously, you can get it via, I think, a browser. But. Are they coming out with your Xbox apps and your Fire Stick? There is an Xbox One app, Mm -hmm. and I think it's one of those, this is our initial rollout. Right. Um, This is interesting. Again, it's streaming. It's not really that watch when you want. There's going to be, like they said, like, a lot of programs will be available for three days afterwards. So it's not a, a, it's still a, a, you know, I'm going to watch this pretty much when it comes on sort of situation. Um, But still, it closes the gap. You know, it closes, it, it X's out, it checkbox on a lot of excuses to get rid of your cable, depending on what you what you watch. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah. Because I am not a cord cutter by any means. No. I'm a Verizon guy, Verizon phone, Verizon Fios at home, the whole nine yards. Yeah. Isn't this just change the cord? Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, yes you're cutting the cord of Comcast or Verizon, mm-hmm. but it's still... An, uh, another bill every we'll, month. We'll, we'll think about this. And, and, um, but there's no agreement. There's no contract. It's 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 different. okay. So it's contract free. It's entertainment. contract right. free. Right. Which, okay, I can understand. And what that. if what if you're a person? What if you're you're a cable person? And and like for me, I can name three channels that if I could if I could stream those right now, I'm good. Right. Yeah. Or they were the last ones. You know. Uh, what if you're a person that, for whatever reason, you watch ESPN, so you have your sports through ESPN, mm-hmm. and your TNT, and maybe you want to upgrade so the kids have uh, Disney Channel or whatever. Right. If that is seriously all you watch on cable, and you can put up an antenna and get the rest of the local stuff, aren't you really tempted to just go ahead and do that? And again, it, 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 and, and what if you're, uh, you know, okay, I can dish my cable and go get Dish TV, Unless I'm in a place I can't put a dish up. Unless I really don't want to put that ugly thing on my roof, right? right? I mean, again, I, I agree with you. It's changing the court, you know. Um, but I, th- I, th- I think one of the key pieces of this, though, is, and and I know there's when you get the, when you get the service at your house, you get a subset of those potentially as an app on only on certain devices. You're right. This is the cord that goes with you. Everywhere, Everywhere you yes. have an internet connection. True, true. But there is with your subscription, you only get one stream. So this is a, this does not replace your cable when you're watching ESPN in the one room and your kids are watching Disney Channel in the other. Yeah. Because you now you have one virtual cord, unfortunately. But again, it's yeah. it's I'm, a step. This I, is a step. step. This I'm looking isn't at the it. Solution. It's a step. As you're stuck at work, working a whole evening, mm-hmm. and you're doing something mundane and you just want to have a TV up to me. That's, that's mm-hmm. that answer. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. You, you, again, you're a place that already has internet doesn't want to install cable. Doesn't want to add that for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. This is another option. You know, I, and I think that that's what it is. It's just options. I, I, I could see even that I could, I, you know, uh, we have, <laughs> we actually have, 
uh, I think I've mentioned in the past, I set up them, uh, my one client with an iPad, hooked up to their television in their lobby. I run a slideshow on that, and we uh, put uh, the music comes over Pandora now. So you don't have to mess with their CDs and disc changer that I'm always going in and trying to fix. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that's it. Now, if they decided they wanted to, I don't know, show TNT all day for whatever reason, that's something they could do, mm -hmm. you know. Um, or, or you know whatever makes sense there if they want. There's, to there's a, CNN, isn't they, there a health food network on there? Uh, there's a home and garden, I think. And I know CNN's part of it. So I mean, it's not everything. Again, food it's like network. food it, network. It, it, it's Turner and 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 Disney channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really with ESPN ABC, and everything. ABC. Um, so Disney. I think that's very very interesting. You know, if I had a ten dollar one that got me USA, I'd be in because now I can watch Raw without you know jumping through hoops on Monday. You know, that's a thing missing for me. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and again, if I'm a person that loves Monday Night Football, Monday Night Football is the thing I can't get. Out of all the Steelers games, if they're on Monday Night Football, I'm screwed. Yeah, you're out of luck. Because lot. I'm a core cutter. You're right. But isn't it over the air? Monday Night Football? No. They moved to ESPN several years ago. Yeah. Uh, you can so see, that's see the one Monday thing. So if I can drop, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm that big of a Steelers fan and I want to drop 20 bucks a month, and honestly, as a video file and a Steelers fan, I'd rather watch it over the air anyways. Mm -hmm. um, but if I, I need to get that one game, drop that $20 a month for the Steelers season. Which is three, four months. Which yep. is three, four months. You get to do that. Mm -hmm. You're good to go. Or whatever your soccer season or NBA season. And they got TNT and stuff on there. So NBA is covered too. Yeah. You know, uh, as far as that goes, um, I, you know, other than your other packages, of course, um, and, and this is going to expand. They're going to start adding other things, other well, tiers. Well, look, it says right there, additional add-on packs with additional kids and news programming will be available for $5 each. They'll add as they go. Exactly. Where's your Fox stuff, you know? Well, um, that, and that would be nice, too, is if, I mean, if you get that price, say you just need one of the packs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So now you're at twenty five bucks. It's uh, a pretty yeah. easy sell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. If it's something that, uh, well, geez, most of the stuff I'm getting on Hulu actually is included in this. Between this and my antenna, now you're now you're throwing away your eight dollar subscription. Toss it in the twenty. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not. And again, yes, this can get expensive, and and as you add on and add on and stuff. But you know, it's again, it's options. Um, there's actually a very come to Jesus moment on cord killers when they're like, you know, we're not really cord killers, as in we hate cable companies because <laughs> their thing is we watch what you want when you want, and they're like, the cable companies are actually providing a pretty good service <laughs> and yeah. giving us lots of options, and this is one of them doing that with Dish Network. So I, I again, it's 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 kind of opening the door, and let's see between this and CBS's digital offering, mm -hmm. um, I think you're going to see more of this. I think um, I wouldn't be surprised if Fox says, um, "Well, here's all of our stuff. Wouldn't it be yeah. great if I got a subscription and I could get all the FX stuff and Fox and Fox movies and whatever else?" You know, um, again, you're going to be like, "Well, I'm a Fox person that does this. I pay for my subscription because I love that stuff on FX. I don't really like much else." It's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. you know? Fox, you can see some NFL, too. This is not for everybody. You know, If you're looking at the, the scattershot of what you do watch on there, there's options. I'm like, oh, I only watch X, Y, and Z, and this is covered here. Eh, I can buy that on Amazon. Eh, okay. You know, yeah. uh, it, there's, there's, there's a lot of reservations with that. But again, it's like more tailoring stuff to you instead of just being spoon-fed what they're giving to you um, and upping your bill every month that you get pissed about. You know, I I, that, I think it's pretty cool there. The, the other thing I'm seeing more and more about the uh, out of these streaming, pro and, and I haven't played with the CBS app, and I'm guessing the Sling TV, I'm guessing you're you're going to start to lose the ability to fast forward through commercials. So, you already are. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, so you already like are. With Hulu if, if and have, stuff like that. If you, oh, with those? I mean, you're Hulu, doing you Hulu. have to watch. Oh, well, even even if you're on demand, um, I was um, watching something on uh, uh, when we were out in California. They have Comcast, mm -hmm. and they had the on demand. I was pulling some stuff up. You can't come. You, you can't. You can't cannot, fast forward. I remember you used to all the time. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. they Bios, X that out. Um, and that's that's the providers. But I guess I'm looking at it as if you DVR'd it yourself, not oh, just right. necessarily the yeah. on demand. Right now, with the cable at home, you're when you DVR something on ABC or ESPN or whatever, mm -hmm. you can DVR it. And then you can fast forward through the commercials. I can see them disabling that. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you can. Well, because the Slink TV doesn't allow you to record, does it? No, no, no. It's kind of like a uh, on-demand-ish kind of thing. 
uh, very, very limited on-demand uh, options provided. So, so I'm, I'm seeing this as we're going to we're going to be able to calculate actual viewed commercials because there's going to be no way around it. Other than the person getting up and walking out of the room. Right. right. It was right. Coming back, issue. which was always and been there. And that's the thing. A lot of stuff but, for that. But this is, and again, you know, not maybe not the cord cutters uh, as we're talking about the alternatives, but uh, Alex actually brings up a good point in the chat. Uh, he says uh, when he moves, finally moves out of his parents' house and live on his own, cable is going to be a low low on his, his uh, priority list. Um and that that's the people again are kind of being aimed at here people are just never have you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. i mean i don't know i mean how many times have have you know uh, coming out of college and stuff you're at somebody's house and you know it's all they have is like a tv sitting in the corner and it's got rabbit ears you know yeah this is the people that they're targeting and that's even more and they don't even do that at that point you know why mm-hmm. am i even putting rabbit ears up everything's online you know in one way or another like this is a whole different world so there's some people that have never paid a cable bill in their life at this point that are i don't know 25 years old you know maybe 30 maybe 30 years old actually um because college 15 years ago had pretty damn good internet you know and uh, they had enough other stuff to do or couldn't afford and they're just used to it by now you know whereas we were used to always having a tv on around us all the time most likely Mm -hmm. right so it's a different it's a culture shift and, and they're trying to get ahead of it so um (laughs) <laughs> yeah good point johnny we we'll talk about that They're stacking that up uh hulu netflix etc how how much are you really saving not have people again if you're like somebody that well really all i want to need is the netflix thing you know on top of this on top of this on top of this i only have amazon prime because i have the shipping so it's Amen. kind of backdoored into, <laughs> my, into my life and i just have it because at this point right but but i, but I think that's a valid point i mean i look at beyond my local channels mm-hmm and what I can get for free legally online. I have, yeah, I have game of Thrones mm-hmm. on HBO mm-hmm. and I have walking dead on AMC. Mm-hmm. Other than those are the two channels I really need. So I mean, you want I, the a la carte. I want, yeah, I want true a la carte. Right. I, yeah, I want yeah, like yeah. the, I, those are the two I'll pay. I'll pay 10 dollars <laughs> while I, HBO is probably gonna make 20 alone. But yeah, I, I, those are the two channels. That's all I need. Yeah. I, I'm, other than that, I'm good. Yeah. And honestly, what, what, what you said, AMC and HBO, mm-hmm. uh, if the tr- rumor is true, they're going to go independent. And you'll have HBO for probably 20 bucks, 15, 20 bucks. And you can always just go get your Walking Dead on, a- on Amazon or iTunes. Here's what I don't like about that. You get it after everybody else. You get it at like 2.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's where even HBO to go now as soon as it starts airing within like 30 seconds to a minute, yeah, right, it's available. You, it's available on HBO to go. Mm-hmm. I somehow, and I, I don't know how they would do it, but somehow the iTunes world has to get that content delivery network <laughs> up. And, and what four hours probably seems like, Oh, it's, it's practically instant. It's not instant when the entire world is blowing up Twitter and Facebook and I can't go on social media hmm. all of Sunday night because of what I mean you're look worried at the, about a spoiler. You know right, you're right. Look yeah, and look at look at right. Walking Dead got themselves in trouble. Yeah, right. <laughs> they spoiled themselves. They spoiled the they spoiled the the last episode of, you know, of the, the you winter know, season. You know I'm big on this show about saying, you know, Think about how the other half lives and the, and the guys maybe without the internet we do. After spending two weeks in California, <laughs> they have to deal with this every week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like like getting raw on blasting my Twitter stream. And I talked about this with Alex last night, actually. He's like, you know, they have all this live stuff and live polling and all this stuff. We don't get it until three hours later. Oh. And it still says live <laughs> in the corner. And you still pretend the app is still working and it's timed up to the show. But... Again, I like like that time zone is a second class c- citizens at that point, and it's not a small population by any no, means, not by you know. But uh, you, here, it's... you take that online, you take that online, mm-hmm. and it's whatever it, time zones no longer matter. There you go. If if you're that dedicated to something, they're gonna they're gonna schedule three hours earlier, and they're gonna watch. Mm-hmm. Um, perfect case of that, Doctor Who. 
when they had the uh, 50th anniversary, was it specials last year? Mm -hmm. Simulcast worldwide. Because it would always air first, primetime at BBC, primetime maybe the next day or a few days later here on BBC America. They just said, it's happening right now at 2 o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> on what was a Christmas day. They just simulcast the crap out of that's that. Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's great. great it's forward thinking, especially mm -hmm. for something like that. That's mm -hmm. a world phenomenon like that. And you know... That's getting pirated for those six hours people have to wait. You know, you know, you just lost a bunch of viewers just for that. You know, um, that's how you get around that. I think it's a, it's a great idea for that. So, um, anyways, <laughs> what else we got here? What else, Captain? Uh, of course, uh, other stuff out of CES. A lot of other uh, stories here. We can probably hit one or two here before we have to bust out of here. Oh. Um, I personally, mm -hmm. just as a quick shout out, and this could go as quick as you want it to, LG throwing WebOS on its new smartwatch. It's not dead yet. Well, and they're throwing it on their TVs too, from what I understand. And all I'm going to say is if you've ever used a WebOS device, yeah, they're beautiful. Like if you look at, if you look and kind of half bred iOS, Android, and Windows phone, and took kind Thanks. of like the best of both worlds. Thanks. I think gave you, a, and, and they yeah. were gave you a little love there. And yeah. They were they were solid OSs too when mm -hmm. they when they had that on the phone, right? Yes. In fact, the, and I'm so glad Android actually picked it up. Kind of the way you can swipe away to the side, the applications mm -hmm. are a lot like how you used to how WebOS actually originally did that. Is this um. Is this the watch? Yeah, this is the watch that they they called out the automated Audi, right? Right. Yeah, they like they they they're, they're like Audi come or something like that to the watch and 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 the car uh, drove up. But um, I'm I'm personally hoping we see a lot more with WebOS mm -hmm. because I feel like WebOS drove a lot of what we see today on our mobile devices, and I'm hoping this keeps everyone on their toes. It looks nice. It looks nice. Bird text. But uh, mm -hmm. they're kind of digging into, yeah, so they're showing the WebOS kernel version, all that kind of stuff. But they're uh, they're putting it on their TVs, and even if you look at the interface down in the lower picture, mm -hmm. with like kind of like the blue, the blue look to the on, on the watch, the, the it, the graphics and the interface to me, is what sold the device. Great. Right. So, so this is something that, that I think I'm, I'm hoping they carry forward and we should keep an eye on. From the chat room, Alex asks, uh, hey, I really miss web TV. Anybody else? <laughs> no. 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 That was a Microsoft no, thing, no, wasn't no. it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was Well, they got bought by Microsoft for a bit. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. they had, um, then they became like the MSN TV Yeah, box. related, I do have around here, I've talked about it here uh, previously, more recently, but I do have, uh, behind actually, across there is actually the web browser CD for uh, the Dreamcast, and I do have a Sega Saturn modem hanging around here somewhere. Nice. Uh, with that, uh, those no were... phone lines. Huh? I said no phone no. lines. And I don't yeah. have a phone line in this house to connect either one of them if I wanted to, which is pretty scary. Um, yeah. This is uh, how the Matrix started when they cut all the hard lines. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but they figured it out. They found a way. Um, Anything else from the lineup? We got so much of that. I love that we have so many stories through the week that we just can't even get through all of it anymore. I have to say the one story that upset me a little being the older gentleman in the room, uh, the, 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 the drone that follows you around. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I just had horrid, horror thoughts of walking in downtown Pittsburgh with the, you know, the 20-somethings in there drones buzzing behind selfie them. drone selfie <laughs> drone yes this was an article on the verge a flying uh camera that follows you anywhere is the next evolution of the consumer drone. Lord, a lot of stuff us. the air dog is the one that they're talking about in particular in, in this case um i dude I, I i there was a great talk on um which was it was i think it was this week in tech and they, they said, and I have to go back and get it, but, uh, but they talked about what is the nice starter, like $50 drone, because mm -hmm. you're going to wreck the crap out of that thing. Um, it, it go with that. And I'm like, man, 50 bucks to get me started. I think I'm kind of tempted on that one. I actually have it saved in Amazon. 
<laughs> oh, did you get that? I, I, yes, I, I've li- I listened oh, please, to that episode. Please share that over me because I, I think I was driving in the car and I couldn't, couldn't uh, uh, you know. And if you purchase on Amazon, remember to purchase through the link on the – is it on a Sorgatron site? Well, we didn't Oscars? really talk about that one, but I guess we can add it on here. <laughs> so please do you remember what that is? is this oh, the, uh, S-Y, S-I – it's the SI five. So, but the, but the, but the cool on. thing about this, maybe not so much walking around the streets, but in this case, they're using it for um, um, skaters. You know, uh, so you can kind of like self followed while you're skating down the street doing tricks, stuff like that. Um, I think that's a pretty cool concept. Well, the thing I like about this is that you could mount almost any camera to it. Mm-hmm. So they showed it with a GoPro mounted to it. Right. They show it with the Sony Handycam mounted to it. I mean, there's a lot lot you can mount to it so it's not like you're stuck with whatever stock camera they have on there i love uh, share your idea of why you wanted a drone uh, with so me the other day. so i live on one of the highest points in pittsburgh and there is no point around me that is anywhere near that i could see the top of my house yeah and with the high winds that high and nothing blocking airflow I have no clue what the status of my shingles are <laughs> up on the roof. So I have I, the same problem. <laughs> so I want I want a drone merely for the fact to send it up, snap a picture, bring it down. I'm good. Every once in a while, just to check because and it's it's not an. It, I'm gonna guess I'm gonna need a fifty foot ladder to get up there because the way the the first and it's pretty much there's no way to get in between without just going straight to the top right because right, of the right. slant so you realize right. this is a business <laughs> rent a drone i'm rent thinking over here. i'm thinking about over here rent a drone exactly. is the next big business anybody that needs a drone like that you just like that got a drone right for you buddy we need a you need a picture of that that thing you At know s-y-m-a-x-5 the SEMA? that's the drone SEMA? s-y-m-a-x-5 Five C uh, came up in my search. Um, I'm, I'm tagging that thing. Yes, this is the one Fa- uh, Father Robert yeah, recommended. Like, yeah. When it was really interesting the way they were talking about it when you when they talked because and, and I never really thought about it, but when you're steering a drone, when you turn it or imagine driving a car right and you right. turn the car around mm-hmm. 180 degrees and it's coming back at you. Now everything, all your joysticks are reversed. Mm-hmm. So you went from forward goes forward, and now forward goes backwards because the front of it is now looking at is you. now looking at you. Um, and what what really throws you off is if you can obviously you you see the device, it's the same on all sides. Yeah, <laughs> like what signifies? You kind of have to track on your own, from my understanding. I think on this one there might be red and green lights okay that that give you that indication of front back or left and right Mm -hmm. okay there was some kind of indicator yeah and it won't hurt this one won't hurt you if you yeah right it won't kill you it it won't kill you was (laughs) one thing go back look for the drone part on on this week in tech that he had this just this past week um it was it was pretty fantastic um so on that note uh, let's roll out here so the people can uh, talk video games next on Boss Battle from InsertCoinToBegin.com. First of all, shout out Soul Power co-founders on the Forbes 30 uh, list. Uh, next Pittsburgh, I think, uh, next Pittsburgh.com also listed. There was a lot of people kind of recognized from the air. Soul Power was one. Uh, I think they were they were, if I recall, uh, looking to uh, power phones and such. Oh, I'm on the wrong computer. That's why. That's why. That's not the right one. Uh, power phones and such um, through the power, like the, the friction of your shoes. So mm. I think it's a third world uh, uh, country kind of problem they're trying to solve there. Actually uh, filmed a presentation they did at the uh, uh, Women in Biotech Power event uh, that we got to live stream through Sorgatron Media here uh, a few months ago. Had uh, Mayor Bill, Bill Peduta uh, presenting and, and a bunch of others. Um, and there it is. Found it. But uh, go check that out. That's on uh, alphalab.org. Has an article up about that. So that's pretty cool. Um, also, Build Guild uh, is having another event, monthly events. There's this, uh, this if 
depending on when you're catching this, Wednesday, January 14th. Uh, if you're a coder, builder, designer, um, it's just a cool kind of event. Um, I have not been able to get out there for a good bit, but a bunch of cool guys out there. Uh, Lot 17 in Bloomfield, uh, pittsburgh.buildguild.org. And also look up Pittsburgh, uh, Build Guild Pittsburgh on Facebook, and uh, you can find information for the event and tell them you're coming there. And as mentioned before, I got a lot of stuff over at Sorgatron.com for my Good Morning podcast. I don't know if you guys are listening to it, but I'm considering it turning it into a video show too. I'm actually record, coming down here recording like we do these, so I have a video file. So I'm thinking like I'll just do up some graphics, actually comb my hair, uh, that I do great. On no, these don't too. just don't comb your hair. Don't comb my hair. That makes I, it's I early. Have, you know, when I first started it, I was just getting rolling out of bed, coming down here, as is. And you can hear it in your voice sometimes. I've, I've listened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you noticed that I take a shower and have breakfast and coffee first before I come down in the last month? Yes, I have um, So uh, there's that. So I'm concerned just like, you know, it, it'll take an extra five minutes to do a video version of it, basically. Why not? Yeah, Why not? I, I, I throw it on YouTube. There's like four episodes a week. Let's, let's, let's see what we can do with that. Um, they'll, they'll buy my time until I figure out my, what my daily... Uh, show thing can be in front of the green screen that I want to work on too. I, I, I have one so more many. thing to do, huh? One more, I, just one more thing, man. Just one more thing, you know. Just one more thing. Somebody will pay me for it someday, right? Hopefully, YouTube ads. I don't know, right? I'm sure I do say interesting things, but no. I uh, again, I reviewed the Amazon Fire TV stick on last Friday's episode, and this morning I talked about backing it up. Uh, my recent, um, my recent um, uh, endeavors with uh, Backblaze and and uh, Disc Warrior and all that kind of stuff. Actually, really good conversation with uh, Doug Durda and uh, uh, Will, Re Will Reynolds Young on, on Twitter about backups and, and everything and what people uh, are trying to do or even how they get started. Uh, so uh, it's really, I, that's really cool that that's actually getting some discussion going. So I'm really happy about that. So uh, Sorgatron.com. Uh, anything you guys want to plug out there? Chilla? I don't have anything personal to plug, but it'll be interesting, and unfortunately it'll be a day too late next week um, microsoft has their big announcement and they're rumoring anything from oh, windows 10 announcements to new browser windows new browser 10. you're running oh, windows 10 i'm running windows 10 on my mac to, to windows 10 for phones to yeah there's i think there's a lot of a lot of speculation and well, how do you we'll like see it? what it brings how long have you been using 10 um since the day it came out okay hey, how's it been is it pretty stable uh, for the yeah, most part i'm happy with it yeah 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 so does it seem to be solving a lot of the 8.1 problems? I don't think I you were. I didn't have you, a problem I would say with you, you were much of an 8.1 hater. But yes. So I. But what they have done for the regular, I I see, I understand the complaints. I didn't personally have a problem with it because when I bought my 8.1 device, it has a touch screen. I think where Microsoft made their their mistake was. They sold 8.1 on non-touch devices. Right. If it did not have touch, it should not have had 8.1. I completely agree with that. Period. Completely. Yes. Um, I thought 8.1 was where they added a bunch of stuff for the people that didn't have a touch screen. It was, well, 8. It was a, I'm it sorry. Was a start. Eight. Eight. It was a start. Yeah. Yeah. 8 was the start. Right. Yeah, if they saw, I mean, You're right. 8.1, they tried to come back and fix it a little bit. You're right. Yeah. And uh, where can people find you online? Crazy Kraus on Twitter and Facebook. Ron Kraus. Yeah, I'm out there. If you dig on the Microsoft, this is the guy to talk to. I do love my Microsoft. <laughs> and, of course, you can check out everything we record here uh, live Tuesdays at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can also follow us, Awesome Cast, on Twitter, Facebook, Google+. Email your thoughts and stories to awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com or on any of those uh, 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 places, actually. And you can also uh, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Stitcher. And, uh, of course, big thanks to Michael Allen, at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters, for helping out with notes and tweets all night long. Uh, keeping things organized so I can get them together and remember what the heck we talked about after I do another four hours of podcasting. Uh, so on that note, thanks, Ron Krause, John Chachilla. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. We're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.